All right, folks, back in the Boss Man Show here with Coach T.J. Johnson here of the Texas State Bobcats out of the Sun Belt Conference. You'll see him come to town to play Georgia State here whenever we get the schedule coming out here real soon. Coach Johnson, talk to me. How you doing, brother? Interim coach, Texas State, man. You doing big things now, my brother? Man, I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited. You know, uh, you know it's a sunny day in San Marcos. You know, the team went to vote today. Uh, you know, our vote is our voice, so I'm encouraging anybody listening to this to please take this election seriously and, uh, and, 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 and be accounted for, man. You know, uh, uh, stake your place in history and be on the right side of history. So well, I'm excited, man. I'm excited to be on here with you, excited to have this platform. You know, it's a great what, – what better time to be a leader in, in, in this country than in 2020? So uh, I'm good, boss. I'm good. No doubt. And I know you had to feel good, Coach Johnson, when the university tabbed you to take over Coach Casper, who resigned. So knowing that the university had confidence in you to take over his program, how did that make you feel, first of all, as a man and professional as well? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, we we all have a desire to do whatever it is we do when, you're comp- when, when, you, when you've when you been raised as a competitor, to do it at the highest level. So having an opportunity to be in this position and do this at the highest level of our profession, you know, it's 300 and what, 53, you know, and I'm one of those, you know, that's an elite group. So, you know, I'm certainly humbled and appreciative that the university looked at me um, as, as a person of, of great character that could actually lead this group during these uh, so uncertain times. So uh, what I try to tell my guys is, hey, man, you're here because of your talent, um, but that won't keep you here. Your decisions keep you here. So certainly, you know, I may have gotten this job initially, you know, uh, five years ago as an assistant for a number of different reasons. Some might say, hey, man, you know, having Nigel Pearson on your AEU team wasn't a bad, wasn't a, wasn't a bad reference on your resume. But at the same time, you know, carried myself the right way, you know, being a person of, of, of great integrity and character and, um, and just being willing to learn, not, not coming in with, with arrogance, not feeling like I knew it all. Uh, I, def- I definitely think that it put me in the right position here. So as a coach, you know, you know, as the competitive competitor in me, just wanting to um, be in this position and, and you know, you want to just see, see what you got, see, see if you, see if you as good as some things that you think you are. So, and if not, see, see how quickly you can get better. Most definitely. And what I love about you is people can see about you. You're loyal because lots of coaches hop around. You were there five straight years. You know, things broke a certain way for you. So it showed that you really dedicated to your craft, and the university saw you getting better as an assistant coach, getting stuff done, giving much more to Coach Casper. So showing your worth as an assistant coach, showing your dedication to Texas State University. So I feel like, you know, that helped too. And I'm glad that you got rewarded for your loyalty and your dedicated case to your craft because you deserved it, man. I, I, I know what you was about before you got there, A and A U game. Guys you, you worked with and developed with. So the fact that you went went there and wanted to take pursue that route, man, so it's about, about your heart and character to begin with. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, man. I I, I do take pride in that, man. You know, um, growing up in the streets of New Orleans, you know, we got unwritten rules about things. And uh, let me just tell you, at, 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 at the very top of that list is loyalty. You know, so you don't want to say things that you can't repeat. Uh, and then and then you don't want it to be a place in that city that you can't go and show your face. So uh, and I take that I take that with me today everywhere I go around here. So um, I certainly, like I said, humbled and appreciative, very thankful about the opportunity. Um, and uh, and I'm, I'm just I'm just being obedient, man. Try to uh, try to allow God to order my steps. No, Dallas, man, it's just cold. So let's talk about the march, you know. March 11th was my birthday when everything got shut down. You know, then the Hawks next game and they get a text message. It's, it's about to be the seven season, right? So for you guys, I know your tournament is typically that week of my birthday, the Sun Belt tournament is. So what, what was that like to go from participating in a tournament to it's all over, then having to go have kids go home on spring break, not come back, all virtual? Take us through that whole process of, of March in the spring for you guys. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell you, man, it's almost like you're not receiving any kind of gifts on your birthday. You know, uh, we felt like we had a very, very good chance of, uh, of competing for a championship. You know, um, you know, we did that my second year here, uh, came up short to Troy, and we felt like this was by far the most connected team 
Um, we felt like this was the only team that we've, which we've had here over the last five years um, of my tenure that had not peaked. So after coming off an unbelievable night versus um, Appalachian State here at home, you know, we're packing our bags, getting ready to go to New Orleans the next morning. And, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, you know, at 8.30 in the morning, we get a call and saying, hey, the AD wants to meet with the team. Um, excuse me, the AD wants to meet with the coaches in, in, in Coach Casper's office. And, uh, and that's when they informed us that, that it was going to be canceled. So for our guys, knowing the work that they put in, for the coaching staff, knowing the preparation, um, you know, it, it was pretty devastating, to be honest with you. It was surreal. And then you feel bad for kids like Nigel Pearson and Eric Terry. You know, um, but Nigel walked away from here and he said one thing in particular. He said, I have no regrets. And, and I believe our coaching staff and our players, uh, although we do, we did feel like, hey, you know, we were, we were robbed of that opportunity, but we had no regrets. We know that we did what we needed to do. Starting off, we were one in four, one in four in conference play. Uh, and we ended up coming back and being tied for second. Um, in, in, in this conference where every night is a war. So, um, you know, I'm proud of these guys, but I'm most of all proud of the way they handled it. You know, these guys picked up the pieces. They, um, I tell them, I say, you, you can, there's not many chances you'll get to, um, you, you, excuse me, I, I, I tell them all the time, I say, what you can control is your reactions. Most you, can, you, can't, you can't control the act. So you, you, you'll be able to control your reactions. And I thought our kids did a really good job of controlling the reactions um, to that. And, um, and now they're just excited and anxious about getting back to work. Academically, Coach, I know guys have been on campus. So how is that going from, from being an on-campus in-person student to being virtual? I know you can check them out on Blackboard you know, when they're at home, but keeping them accountable where they can't – they miss class, you can't even go make them run a hill or something or run some sprints for you if you're missing a class. So how is that to keep the young men focused academically while they're back at home and in their, in their own environments, not with their structure around and they have a campus with you guys? Boss, that's the most, that's, that, that's the most challenging thing. You know, years ago they said, "Oh man, pretty soon the new wave of of of, of academics you're going to be educated online." You know, you nobody have to, just like they told us when we were growing up, cars will be flying by now. You know what I'm saying? All of that stuff. Most definitely, man. These kids are so uninterested in taking classes online now. They used to get excited about it back, you know, maybe a couple of years ago. Now mm -hmm. it's exhausting, and um, and we feel like it's, it's very difficult to hold them accountable. So what we've done is this. If we sense that these are challenging classes and that they're having a hard time keeping focus, they come up to the office. Texas State, uh, it's a, it's a bless, blessing to be a coach here. We have a $64 million renovation um, that, that was completed two years ago. So we have a wonderful facility plenty enough room for these guys to come in here. So doing your 10 o'clock class, you're going to take your 10 o'clock class up here, although it is online, just to make sure that you're giving the right amount of attention that's needed to that particular class. So you have to kind of get creative, uh, get you an opportunity to touch them, have some human interactions with them and things of that nature, in-person interaction. So um, we think that it, it's definitely difficult, but hey, my, my dad used to say if it was easy, anybody could do it. And Most he used to always tell me when I was a teacher, you're the smartest guy in the room, figure it out. So um, it's our responsibility as their coaches um, to kind of help them be successful and in, um, in, in, in put them in a place to where they can uh, have some structure. And structure about this also, coaches, physically, how did you all approach them being away from home, trying to keep them in some kind of shape, knowing that they're different environments, whether the rules are different here? So. How does strength coaching you guys kind of huddle together, kind of say what we gonna do to see, make these guys kill, keep them in semi shape, be able to run, do some exercise in the yard? How was that for you guys as well? Accountability partners. Hey man, call your boy, challenge him. How many of you do today? All right, well, I'm about to call him. He only did this many. He say, Nah, he didn't do that many. So I got those guys to challenge each other. Hey, Facetime when you're doing this. Let us see. So uh, we we were creative in that. Um, trying to provide some, um, some innovative ways. Um, certainly our strength conditioning um, coach has helped us. Um, but for the main part, hey, 
pairing these guys up, getting them to look at each other from, from, from across the way and say, man, hold on, you put up how many shots today on your outside goal? Yeah, you got an outside goal too. Get out there and shoot, you know. So, and just let them know that any level of activity was good. You know, if you can't get in the gym, hey, man, get outside and do ball handling drills in your driveway. Hey, if you, if you don't have cones, you know, you, you know, you, I say you can use a whole lot of different things. You, you got chairs in your house. You got, you got things in your garage. So just challenge our guys and then tell them stories about us growing up, things we didn't have, you know, in, in, in ways we made it work. So uh, it, it, it was really, you know, it was really good to kind of see them kind of growing into themselves. And coach, using Zoom as well with what's going on in our country, you know, we had murders and different things uprising with the pandemic. So, how did y'all use that platform of Zoom to teach the young men about, you know, what's going on in the country? You told me off the air you got your guys going out and voted today. So, how did y'all kind of educate the young men civically and what's going on in our country? Because they are the next generation. I'm 33 years old. So I know how it's been a millennial. They 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 that Gen Z right behind me. So getting them ready for what's coming as they get to my age and older. Yeah, absolutely, man. You know, one of the things that that um that really, you know, I had been in the point of contact position for three and a half months. Certainly I only been in the head coach here for three weeks, but you know, um throughout this whole investigation you know, I was the acting quote unquote head coach up point of contact. So it gave me some flexibility to kind of do some different things. So we had two weekly Zooms and on those weekly Zooms, there will be videos um, to kind of spark conversations. We tried to pro provide safe and supportive environments for these guys to talk about certain things. Um, one thing in particular that we did, we did an anonymous um, survey we had guys talk about, um, you know, the importance of voting, whether or not they would vote, uh, um, social injustice. Um, did you, you know, what do you know about, you know, certain laws and certain things of that nature? And we asked the guys, hey, listen, this could be completely anonymous. All but three players, all but three players put their name on it. So when they told me that they, when they put their name on it, it showed me that they wanted to be identified. I said, well, we can rip the Band-Aid off. Now we can talk about these issues. We, we can have guest speakers on Zoom. You know, these guys can have a voice. So what's important to you? So just um, by us having a voice, showing these kids that how to use their voice and just, just taking accountability for, uh, for, for the impact that we can have on our own society. So it's been, it's been really, really good watching these kids, like I said, step up and be accounted for. And I'm living what I'm seeing in Texas right now. Early voting started yesterday. Uh, the lines are long. People saying that they got they got to wait four and five, six hours, but at least they're getting the job done. Don't let the obstacle stop you. Don't be deterred by the suppression issues. I hear in Georgia, 11 hours to vote. Are you kidding me? At least that's a whole day of work for some people, right? You know, no. but to, but it's that important to make to get this change. This is going. This is generational right here for our kids and their kids. You know, to get this right now right you see what's going on with the with the supreme court right now so i mean it's it's so much is happening that they can see for coach johnson how important what you're saying to him is just by watching the news what's going on around him as we speak yeah, absolutely my mom used to say man if you if you see a good fight get in it you know it, it's a it's a reason you know and and just to be liberated and be free and 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 to um to be a part of of history and, to, and you at, at some point boss we got somebody going to ask us you know about about this election mm -hmm. and you don't want to you you don't want the answer to be I, I i didn't vote i didn't participate in it you know and that's what i told my kids you know hey you know this is an opportunity for you. And the hardest thing in the world to do is to live with regrets. So, you know, so we voted today. Uh, I don't know where my sticker went, but we did not use our day, but you can kind of see you, this is all bent up. So we went through we, our guys, we gave them this, we went through all of this with them about wow. how to go about voting and who to, so they've had this all week to go through it, the candidates and things of that nature to be informed. Um, the university did, did not allow us to instruct them, you know, because they didn't want to, anyone to import biases upon it. But um, we voted today, and, um, and it felt really, really good to do so. 
the reason why we didn't practice is because we wanted to vote today as a team. And then on, on, uh, on the election day, we, we have a mandatory off day boss. So what we're going to do is we're going to go out and, and work, not the polls per se, but we're going to work the streets and get people, um, let, let people know where the voting poll is and, and just direct them and continue to encourage them and celebrate them as they go in and come out of voting. I love that because you know what I'm doing here in Atlanta is I am going and giving out snacks and drinks to people waiting in line. You know, while I'm not out, I'm not interviewing people. I'm out here giving snacks to people because I, I know what happens here in Georgia is that suppression's real here. <laughs> you know, it's real here in Georgia, so I know you're gonna be there for a while. So I go out and give them snacks and drinks because I part of some of my sponsors to do that because they were so happy to do it. Now, coach, I'll be honest with you. And so I've been talking about life and the issues of, issues of the world. I've lost five sponsors, coach, four to five, five, five sponsors. On, on the week, but guess what? I still got some with me who's still willing to do the right thing. So the five I lost, hey, it's all good, you know. You still, right. I ain't need you anyway. I'm still, I'm still going strong, right? But this, the idea that speaking about issues that pertain to me and my people from Chattanooga to Macon is a problem. A long time about about the Hawks, the Braves, college basketball is okay, but when I talk about issues pertaining to me and my people. It's a problem. So just to say on the radio side, you know, it's funny. But I'm not going to be the church to help my community. And as you do for your players, helping them be close to their community as well. Well, it's all commendable for you, Coach. I love it. Absolutely, man. But shout out to you, man. You, hey, you, 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 you come from that LeBron school. Look, don't, don't, don't tell me shut up and dribble. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, no, nah, man, much respect to you, man, because, um, hey um, – Sometimes, man, the, the, the court of public opinion, it, it, it's just that. That's all it is. It's just, it's just public opinion. And um, I, I encourage these guys, man, take the road less travel. It just seems harder. It yeah, just you, seems harder. That's it. It's perception. <laughs> but it's more rewarding later, though. We take the road, oh, road less, less travel. Because I feel yeah. rewarded. I feel like, you know, no matter what happens on November 3rd, I had an impact on it. I try. I may influence somebody to do something differently. So that's all that matters. My dad always tell me, as long as you get one, you may get you get two, you get three, you get four. Let's make sure you reach at least one. So as long as you know you're doing that, you're making an impact. So that's why I feel like I'm doing, Coach. Yeah, start there, man. Shout out to you, man. That's big time. Now, Coach, talk to you about this, man. You know, for you guys getting in shape, and then that when they with you guys. So, how's that been reacting them to, to to what's going on here and getting them going ready for November twenty fifth here coming up here real soon in a month here. So, how has that been going so far, man? That's been pretty difficult to be honest with you. You know, um, when guys have extended breaks, you know, we we we've made this sport uh, more year round. You know, when when I was growing up. You know, when it was baseball time, we played baseball. When it was football time, we played football. When it was basketball time, we played basketball. So we played everything when it was in season. Uh, now, you know, guys train and play basketball year-round. So that extended break, you know, put out a lot of our guys in jeopardy of, uh, they say, soft tissue, soft muscle injuries. And then um, just also really trying to look at this year as you've done in the past. You know, saying, well, we were able to do this, this, and this at this point in time last year. But this is a different year. So just being flexible, being able to restructure some things have helped. Um, I can tell you right now, man, um, one thing that we've cut back on is, is really like uh, like running conditioning. We took out the mile. We took out our lateral run. We took out, I'm not going to say punishment run because we, we can't do that anymore, but we took out accountability running. So now we're focusing on, hey, these guys are probably get, getting as good a shape if you let them get up and down a little bit. So, yeah, we get up and down a little bit more. Um, and also, you know, hey, maybe they can make a few more shots if they have a stronger core. So now we do core exercises for accountability. So just finding, you know, boss, just finding creative ways to get it done. Hey, man, there, there's no right or wrong way of doing it, but there are consequences. So I'm just trying to figure out the best way to minimize the, 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 uh, the, the consequence. Most definitely. And uh, I can ask his coach, talk to us about this. Um, who are some guys on your roster that my guys need to look out for you here in Atlanta? Cause I know you all play Georgia State, Georgia Southern here. So who are some guys on the roster you need to look out for, key returners and key new, new, two newcomers we should look out for on your roster this year, man? Yeah, man, we're blessed to have um, eight returning players. 
you know, so we have a good core, good nucleus of guys to kind of understand what, what we're doing and, and what our mission is and what our goals are. Uh, I would say definitely we got to start with our two guards. I think Mason Harrell and Marlon Davis are, are, are some of the some of the better guards in the conference. Um, you know, um, I, I know this conference is loaded with talented guards, but, um, you know, Marlon Davis led the conference in, in assist to turnover ratio and Mason Harrell was at least second or third, you know, so um, we like our guard duel. And, um, you know, I think people can expect that those guys are going to play a little bit more together, you know, um, because they've been feeding off each other pretty well. And, and at times throughout the course of the year last year, uh, we had our best lineup with those two on the floor. You know, uh, we're going to throw the ball inside. So I think that, um, you know, paint touches are important, whether or not it's driven or, or pass. And hopefully we're, we're, we can get our guards to get downhill a little bit more. But if we throw it inside, we're throwing it inside to Alonzo Sule. You know, uh, Red Shirt Jr., you know, he came off the bench with great energy for us in the past. And, um, you know, he's been in the lab work and he's been healthy. You know, he's confident. And he feels like whatever Terry graduating, that this is his time. So I would say certainly those three guys, you know, coupled with, you know, the, the things that um, Isaiah Small can do, being a six, six foot seven, um, four man, with probably extended wingspan. You know, he's a slim, wiry guy, but he can be slippery at times. So um, we're looking for, for, for those guys to be key contributors. So, um, you know, if, if we're going to come to Atlanta and do something that's rarely done, you know, we need those guys to play well for us. Mo Devin, now, Coach, now tell us about this. When y'all come to Atlanta, how's that trip for you guys coming to the ATL, play Georgia State, hit the Georgia State Sports Arena, which is a weird kind of up, being on the third floor there. It's weird. It's weird. I see, not, not, it's like not every school has it, you know, the way they have it, sports in Georgia State. So how is it to come play the Panthers? And how is it for you having some roots here in Atlanta, some friends and family here as well when you come to town, man? Well, for me, it's – um I'm going to speak on a personal – it's always exciting. You know, because I know I'm going to get a chance to see my dad. My dad lives in Atlanta, you know, got a brother who lives there. So they're going to come to the game, you know, uh, got got high school friends that live there and um, just family from, from New Orleans that, that also live there. And they always come out and support. So I'm always excited. Um, from a competitor standpoint, from a coach and a player standpoint, um, man, I don't know if there's a game in which we know – what we're going to get or what we're getting ourselves into more than that one. I would say Lafayette is probably a close second, but when you walk in that gym right there, you better be ready to go or you're going to get embarrassed. Oh, and that's just, and they're going to let you know about it. The level of swag that those guys play with, the level of toughness, uh, and just a high level of skill. Uh, we, although we are probably the furthest, uh, we're, we're, we're the furthest west of them, man, we keep an eye on what's going on in Georgia. Um, the championship for this conference goes through the state of Georgia. That's the Mo bottom line. Mo if definitely. you're going to win the championship in this conference, you got to beat the Georgia teams. Most definitely. And you got Brian Bird now at Southern, who you know from being Texas Tech, having a, a recruit against him for some guys. You know, he going to bring a new swagger down to where Coach Bonson went to James Madison now. And, you know, Rob Bonier, you know, he's going to do what he's going to do. Uh, now, I got to ask you, now he's gone now. How was it always to play Ron Hunter's zones, man? People always tell me, man, his zones is, so, uh, is one of a kind. So tell us about how it was to play Ron Hunter's zones now when y'all come over here to play, when they come over to play you guys as well. It's something that you get better at the second time around, no doubt. Um, it's hard to prepare for it. You know, it's hard to rep it in practice and, and feel like you got it under control. Uh, if you look at it, the, t the time in which we have played well and beat Georgia State, it's the second time we've played them. Now we have a better feel, and now we have adjustments that, 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 that we think are going to put us in a position to be successful. Ron Hunter is a mastermind behind that zone. I mean, he ran it before he even got to Georgia State, and, he, and, he, and now he's running it at Tulane. Uh, he believes in it um, and, and, and gets his guys to believe in it. So, uh, but you know what? That wasn't just the, the, the toughest thing about playing Ron's team. Um, they were always very, very talented. And mm -hmm. what people don't know, they didn't play as fast as they appeared to play. They were very structured. <laughs> You know, he called things. They ran things. Most definitely. 
He knew where he wanted the ball at. Whether or not, hey, man, my, Ron did something that I said, man, this dude got three quality bigs, and he has Malik Ben Levy running a five. We can't hedge on this. We can't hedge this ball screen because he got a dude that's going to go seven for 11 from the three point line if you continue to do that. You know, and um, uh, he was just really, really good at creating mismatches that worked for him. He would post the Marcus Simons. Hey, yeah, he's my point guard, but I'm going to post him. You know, hey, I'm going to make this thing even harder for you. You know, I'm going to play the Marcus Simons at the two and then bring in Kane Williams, not behind him, but with him. Now figure out that. How are you going to play that? So um, he's a great coach. Um, he, he does a great job of preparing this team. And um, listen, I'm glad he's gone, to be honest with you. But listen, look, let me tell you, tell you I, I, look, I got the utmost respect for Coach Lanier. That dude there is a dude. So uh, I'm not happy about that hire for obvious reasons. But listen, <laughs> like, Coach Lanier, I was on the phone with Coach Lanier today for 30 minutes, man. He's, a, he, he's like a big bro, so I, I really uh, – I'm happy for him. That's um, my guy, too. And, yeah, and I know he's going to do um, – exceedingly and abundant things there. So, Well, when you all play, I'll be so neutral. I'll play, I'm indifferent. <laughs> Man, look, one thing I know about you, boss, that is lip service right there. You're I'm indifferent. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm serious. That's just because of the – Hey, that's just your mouth talking. I know where your heart at, man. <laughs> hey, hey, I went to Tennessee State. So I'm not sure to say I'm Tennessee State. So I'm definitely indifferent. <laughs> I got you. Lose a Penny Collins play. Hey, I'm good. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, shout out to Penny, man. He got that thing going, man. Penny, man, Penny got to be one of the first dudes that reached out to me when I got this. And um, certainly, man, just encouraged me to, um, to operate in my truth, to trust myself. Um, and, uh, um, you know, he, he gave great advice, man. Penny, Penny, like the old uncle, man, like an old school uncle in the backyard, man. He's like, you like, Uncle Penny going to be there? You know, if Uncle Penny going to be there, man, I'm coming because I know it's going to be a good time. So, man, shout out to Penny, man, Tennessee State, you know, wishing him um, the best as, as practice got started. Yeah, my, I'm a model at Tennessee State University. Yeah, man. So, Coach Tilly, as long as they play in TSU, at TSU, man, I'm indifferent. <laughs> now, if you're playing somebody I don't know or don't like, I got you all day. <laughs> I'm a rock man, with look, the Bobcats, man. <laughs> man, look, I, look man, somebody asked me today, man. I mean, no, I'm lying. Two weeks ago when I first got the job, I said, man, we got to finish this schedule. I said, man, um, Southern wants to play. I say Southern. Sean Woods. <laughs> I say, look, man. I say, man, Sean Woods is my guy. I said, first of all, we're not messing with him right now. And that's my that's my alma mater. So I said, I'm not in a place emotionally to play them right now. I said, I said, man, you gotta let me get my feet, you get my yes. knees, get my knees into this thing. We're not playing Southern right now. I fool around and, and at halftime, I'll be you know, I be singing my alma mater. I said, look, I'm not ready for this, man. <laughs> Don't do this to me, man. You, you know? get that right. <laughs> man, you know, I'm not ready for this, man, you know. So, uh, but no, man, shout out to Tennessee Tennessee State and all the HBCUs. You know, graduated from Southern, got my master's from PV. So, it run, it run deep in my blood, man. So No doubt. Well, that's what I got for you, Coach, this, man. Talk to you about your Saints, man. Is Drew Brees coming back next year? Because, look, his arm is done, Coach. The arm like his noodle arm, and I'm just being real with you. Man, look, let me say something, man. Let me say something about Drew. <laughs> hey, um, that break didn't help him either. Okay, let's just say that. You know, when, you, when you're that old, you got to keep this thing going. That's why my man Tom Brady got got himself in trouble going to Tampa Bay, um, practicing, he ain't had no business doing it, man. Mm -hmm. The old guys need that work. But, um, hey, man, when you missing an elite level wide receiver, like – Michael Thomas, who's, you know, got a chance to be a Hall of Famer, you know, putting them Hall of Fame-like numbers this early on in his career, come from great pedigree with, with his uncle Keyshawn, you know what I'm saying? One of the best route runners. He, he fights to get open. Um, and just being that size. So certainly we, we're, we're missing that, and, and, and we're a little bit easier to, to key in on. But, you know, my man, my, my, man, my man Kamara, you know what I'm saying, that North Carolina oh, yeah. boy, that Georgia boy out there, hey, you know what I'm hey, saying? so sweet, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think we're gonna be all right, you know. Uh, Mike, we'll, Mike, we'll get we'll, we'll get can't call Mike back, 
And, um, you know, Drew, hey, I, I, I'm happy that, we, that Drew is able to, you know, stand up after a play. Hey, you know, like, we're, we're, you know, we're keeping him off the, off the ground. So uh, I think we're going to be all right. Now, I do think that um, – that that we gotta we gotta tighten down some things. We're not as cohesive of a unit as, as we've been in the past. So if we can kind of clear up some some locker room issues, you know, and um, I think we can be all right. We just got a few little locker room issues we gotta clear up. Traquan Smith is developing too, though. I mean, look like you pay Emmanuel Sanders too much money because Traquan Smith is developing a number two receiver job need, man. Because Emmanuel Sanders, I mean, he got name baby, he ain't getting the job done like he could for you. Had a good Monday night though. Had a good Monday night. Emmanuel is understanding that when you when, with Drew, you know you got to fight to get open because he's gonna try to fit that ball in some tight spots. So, but yeah, Traquan, but Traquan a young a young buck man. You know what I'm saying? He 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 just trying to make a name for himself. I like it though. So but when Mike comes back, he'll make it easier for those guys. You know, because you can't key in on them. And, uh, you know, we're going to try to put those guys in some situations where they can be successful if we can get Drew to stand up right. But uh, one, thing I, one thing I hope we can do, man, we got to open up some lanes for, um, for Kamara to, to get to the second level. If he can get to the second level and get guys missing, you know, we get, I think he's getting hit too much at the line of scrimmage or before. So we can do that. We'll be all right. And let's taste some heel, please. I mean, to stop that. No, I, like, he, he, like he takes away from Drew's rhythm. I mean, I'm like, okay, now Drew takes take, take, take some heel. Third, third down, bring heel, third down? Like, come on. Yes. Sean, I know Sean Payton's a mad scientist, but come on, man. Let's taste some heel, more Drew Brees. Enjoy his last year before you go to James Winston, the pick six master. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> certainly, certainly, certainly um, by overthinking it with Taysom. You know, um, I mean, everybody knows if he's in a game, he's getting the ball. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's not that hard. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, I mean, he's going to drop back, but he's going to run it. So we got to figure out a way how to be, be a little bit more creative with him and, uh, and, and just use him in situations where it's not so obvious. Oh, definitely. Coach Johnson, man, good speak with you about your program, my brother. Talk some Saints with you. Uh, that's always my favorite team to come to town, the Saints and the Cowboys, between you and them. I like y'all fans better. It's just more better with, over, with talk junk with y'all. The Cowboy fans just just arrogant for no reason. They ain't won nothing in 20, over 25 years, so they need to be quiet. <laughs> y'all won some, won some against, against the great Peyton Manning, so, hey, I can respect that. But the Cowboy fans, man, y'all chopping and cho every year. It's our year. It's been there for 25 years. Shut up. <laughs> You know, it's a Cowboys year every year. That's how they operate, man. But certainly, man, it's always good uh, visiting with you, with you guys, man. Uh, love the, you know, just just love the platform that you have and how you're using it. Uh, and I love the passion that you do this with, man. Like, I, I just think that you, like, this This is not a chore for you, man. This is all your pleasure. And I just think that it, it, we we as people, we got to do more things. We got we to gotta go in the fields in which it don't feel like work. Where it's never, where it's never been a job, it's been your pleasure. So, um, just, just, just seeing you operating your truth, man. I just wish you all the best, man. Moving forward, man. Same here, Coach. Hey, even though you from New Orleans, man, I, I got your back, man. <laughs> I got you. I appreciate it, man. Look, if you in that city, I, I'm gonna take care of you, man. Shoot me a text. I got you. List of places to go. List the foods to eat. You know. Whatever, whatever, whatever is your palate, let me know, man. I'm good down there. Trust me. I'm gonna text you off the air. Get, get, get with you, nigga. I gotta know when I we go play the Pelicans. What I need to go eat. What I need to go do while I'm down there. <laughs> I got you, man. I'm telling you, I got you. Trust and believe. No doubt. Well, today, Johnson, the Boston Man Show, Texas State Bobcats out of Sun Belt Conference. Check him out, people.